Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Anton Debora. I'm the Executive Director of the Johns Hopkins University Information and Security Institute. Welcome. Before we get started, I just wanted to point out that if you'd like to ask us any questions over the course of the webinar, all you have to do is select the questions section on the control panel uh, on your laptop, or if you're on a phone or tablet, select the question mark and we will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, this is me, I'm Anton Deborah, and I wanna tell you a little bit about who we are before we get to the other speakers. First of all, a little bit about Johns Hopkins and the Whiting School of Engineering. We are a, uh, a part of Johns Hopkins with 1,600 graduate students and 1,800 undergraduates. We also have a thriving part-time graduate community. We have 181 faculty members and so on. The important thing is that we are one of the epicenters of research and academic activity in the United States, as you probably are well aware. And uh, our Information Security Institute is no exception to that, as you'll find out. The mission of our institute, which is part of the Whiting School of Engineering, is uh, it's two-pronged, but these, these different aspects are tightly intertwined. One is excellence in pure and applied research, and the other is through our educational programs, such as the Master of Science in Security Informatics. Our institute has been around for a while. We were one of the first research centers in the United States devoted to information security. We were founded in 2001 by Professor Jerry Mason, and we were uh, designated as a, Depart a Department of Defense National Center for Academic Excellence in Information Assurance Research and Education. A little bit about, just to show you about our faculty members. Some of you may have seen or heard about uh, our faculty members in the news or in scientific publications. Uh, Professor Avi Rubin, Assistant Professor Matthew Green, uh, Ass Associate Professor uh, Susan Hohenberger Waters, and so on. Uh, we also have uh, members of the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab who have faculty positions with our institute. In addition, we have a number of lecturers and there are two points here. One is that we work very hard to stay on the forefront of information security. And so we bring in uh, instructors and faculty as needed to reflect those topics. For instance, uh, uh, analytics, uh, security analytics or cloud security. Uh, and the other is that our educational program is holistic. So not only is it the technical programs, uh, the, the technical aspects of security that we cover, but it's also uh, aspects of security such as legal and ethical, uh, privacy aspects, uh, policy and business and so forth. So that when you come out of here, you have a well-rounded education and are well prepared for your career ahead. A little bit about our research, which we're very proud of. Uh, Professor Avi Rubin, uh, Avi Rubin leads a uh, research group here that has been focusing on security in healthcare applications called THAW, and you can get more information about that at www.thaw.org. Some very interesting work going on there. We have a couple of applied crypt uh, cryptographers, uh, actually three, uh, doing various, uh, various aspects of research in cryptography, um, such as program obfuscation, uh, Professor Green, who you'll hear from later, was a co-author of the famous Keys Under Doormats paper, uh, talking about backdoors in crypto systems. And uh, also Professor Abhishek Jain has continued with his uh, work on techniques for program obfuscation as well as functional encryption problems. And then uh, we have all kinds of other work going on, uh, including looking at software vulnerability in drones and other types of systems. A few highlights from 2017. Uh, you probably have seen us in the news. Uh, we have been interviewed and quoted in countless news stories and, uh, and uh, video and so forth, most recently regarding the, uh, the now well-known Spectre and Meltdown vulnerabilities that were discussed a couple of weeks ago in the media. Uh, the, uh, as I mentioned, the, the Thaw program has been going into its fourth year. Uh, we also host uh, the uh, state-of-the-art, the, the top-tier conferences, such as the Theory of Cryptography Conference that was hosted here last fall, 
we have our own annual uh, annual conference uh, on cybersecurity that our students are a part of uh, that had over 100 people attending. And we also are involved in out outreach efforts as well. So we're a very active, vibrant research and educational center, and I welcome you to join us. So with that, uh, I'm going to summarize and just say that we are uh, the nation's first information security program that is focused on healthcare information security. We have unparalleled dual degree programs as well, uh, involving security and other aspects of, uh, of science and engineering. The research opportunities are plenty here, and you will be involved in research during your educational experience at Hopkins. Uh, and you will be interacting with world-class faculty who are leading experts in the security field. And so now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Shangyang Lee, who's our program director of our MSSI program. Hi there. Uh, this is Xiaoyang Li. So I'm the uh, program director of the uh, Master of Science in Security Informatics program uh, called MSSI. So, so I'm very glad you know, to have the, uh, this chance to share some information about this program with you. Uh, so, so the MSSI program actually was uh, uh, started in 2002. So it was one of uh, 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 first such uh, you know full-time uh, uh, cybersecurity or information security uh, programs, uh, graduate programs in the in the U.S. Uh, so the uh, you know we will I, I will go through some some additional information about courses you know the program study uh, the research uh, you know in this program uh, to to give you uh, the overview. Uh, so we try to uh, uh, give the students in this program a rounded, uh, you know, curricular uh, experience uh, shown by a combination of uh, technology and non-technology uh, courses. So the non-technology -tech courses uh, include include the courses in uh, policy management and health uh, categories. Uh, in starting in uh, fall 2015, uh, you know, we started a new. Uh, policy and management track for those students who are interested in a, a, a cybersecurity career, uh, you know, in management, consulting, uh, you know, that kind of a career path. Uh, uh, so to, to, you know, while you satisfy all the uh, cat course cat, uh, requirements you know, in different categories, uh, our students do have the flexibility to uh, choose courses, you know, based on their own kind of interest. So I will show you, uh, you know, a very broad range of technology and uh, uh, non-technology courses, uh, you know, offered throughout our cu curriculum. Uh, over the whole program study, we uh, encourage or emphasize, you know, research uh, again and again uh, to all our uh, uh, students because research really is the signature of uh, any JHU education experience. Uh, students will be supported in, you know, this uh, the, the research kind of kind of experience by uh, seminars, for example, you know, uh, uh, by all uh, external, uh, you know, practitioners, su subject matter experts. You know, we we regularly uh, inv invite to talk to our students. Uh, students will conduct uh, real world kind of kind of kind of. Uh, research in uh, the required capstone project as part of the uh, co uh, the, de the degree requirements, uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, various summer uh, internship opportunities, you know, for our students. So we have seen a significant growth uh, of our program. Currently, we have over 100 U.S. and inter international students, uh, you know, studying in this uh, program. So the two tracks uh, are, are shown uh, on this slide, uh, the traditional technology and research track and the new policy and management track. If you look at the course requirements, so we try to balance uh, the, the different uh, categories. Uh, so for, uh, for TR track, technology and research track, uh, students will, will be uh, you know, asked to take uh, more technology courses. Uh, you know, compared to policy and management track. But in both tracks, 
uh, students will will uh, need to study at least one crypto a cryptographer cryptography course, uh, which we consider to be the foundation of many information security solutions. And also, all the students are required to, uh, to conduct one uh, team-based capstone project. If you look at this slide, uh, we have, uh, uh, I, I just counted it, uh, so we have over 20 technology courses. So those uh, technology courses, uh, they cover uh, traditional uh, courses such as, you know, actually we have six uh, uh, cryptography courses on different levels, you know, to satisfy all the, all the needs, you know, of our students. Uh, we have other generic course topics such as, you know, introduction to information security, uh, computer forensics, uh, network security, cloud uh, computing security, uh, as well as uh, uh, new, uh, you know, emerging kind of topics such as uh, security analytics, uh, ethical hacking, uh, critical infrastructure protection. You know, those are the, uh, you know, uh, catching up with the latest uh, research and and uh, practice in uh, information security. So we are we are you know uh, constantly updating our curriculum to you know to 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 to. Uh, address the current need, you know, in this uh, very, very broad uh, field. Uh, Non-technology courses actually are important in uh, the problem study of our students. It is uh, uh, just because, you know, security, information security is such a, uh, you know, unique kind of, kind of field. Uh, it has all the uh, policy, reg uh, regulatory, management uh, implications, you know, uh, so we try to educate uh, technical leaders uh, in in this field. So we want our students to to be exposed to all the essential topics. Uh, so we have the core policy courses uh, taught by uh, a few uh, practicing attorneys. You know, actually through teleconferencing, uh, we have we have just added a new uh, a global cybersecurity course, you know, to, 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 to have an uh, international kind of flavor of, of the current landscape of, you know, information security. Uh, we have uh, management courses to cover uh, project man management, uh, uh, financial uh, aspect of, of uh, security operations, risk management, you know, those essential topics. Uh, just because, you know, Hopkins has the best uh, uh, you know, research in, uh, in medicine, in health. So we have this special uh, ha uh, core health category. Uh, so these courses offer through our world, world uh, uh, you know, known uh, school of medicine. Uh, for for students on the P, uh, the policy and management track, uh, we have the uh, fund uh, foundational management category uh, courses. Those are offered by our uh, Center for Leadership Education. So students can study uh, management, uh, leadership, entrepreneurship, you know, those very important, very relevant uh, uh, topics. Uh, so this slide simply shows um, uh, one example uh, of, you know, how uh, students go through their problem study. This is for uh, uh, technology and research track. So basically, uh, our students uh, usually they take uh, uh, around four courses, regular courses, as well as you know the seminar uh, seminar course, seminar uh, class in the first in one uh, in each of the first two semesters, and then they conduct uh, capstone research in the last uh, semester. Uh, but we do you know, encourage our students to consider research over the whole program study. So we we have seen more and more students taking on research. Uh, early on in their program study. So I really cannot emphasize enough, you know, researching our program study. So uh, this slide and the next slide uh, show the 22 capstone projects conducted by 52 MSSI students in the past four semester for uh, 2017. Uh, so uh, also, actually, our students work with uh, uh, students from other 
uh, academic units, both undergraduate and graduate students, you know, in such kind of research. Uh, such capstone uh, research, uh, you know, they are conducted by students, uh, you know, on, on team ba basis, supervised by faculty mentors. Uh, many of them are co actually collaborations with uh, external company and research institutions. Uh, for example, in last fall, we, we had uh, external mentors from Accenture, from APO, from Capital One. The, 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 uh, they, actually, there's a new data science center at Capital One, uh, as well as you know, other uh, companies. Uh, so if you go through the, the, you know, the, the titles of those 22 projects, you will see a very diverse uh, range of topics, um, especially uh, um, currently on um, IoT, on um, data analytics, you know, etc. Uh, I do encourage encourage you to check out more inf information about you know, our student research. Right, if you go to our website, you will uh, see the uh, all the projects in the past uh, three years uh, with uh, you know the abstract. So you can you can get uh, some ideas about you know what our students are working on. Uh, as well as you know the uh, a list of uh, student publications you know uh, resulting from such kind of research. I know you know career development is very uh, important to all of you. Uh, our students uh, had many opportunities to take on uh, internship uh, positions over summer. So so on this slide, uh, this is a uh, incomplete list of uh, the uh, internship uh, offers our students got in the past in, in this past summer and uh, our students after graduation they uh, you know uh, go out to work for the uh, you know different industry sectors shown you know on this uh, list as well as government uh, very important government uh, positions you know to protect our nation and and, and you know the you know, basically the society. The society. Uh, so that concludes my uh, introduction of the MSSI program. Uh, I'm I'm very excited to uh, you know to welcome you to 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 you know get to know more of our program. So you can check out our website and also uh, feel free to you know contact us if you have any questions. My name is Matthew Green. I'm uh, an assistant professor here at uh, Johns Hopkins uh, Information Security Institute. Uh, I uh, am one of three faculty who work here in the information security, three full-time faculty. Uh, one is Avi Rubin, one is Abhishek Jain, and one is myself. Uh, the work that I do is in the area of applied crypto, applied cryptography. And so that means basically taking encryption and other types of cryptographic primitive and using them for actual stuff that you can do in the real world. And so that covers a lot of different areas. So in the last few years, my lab has looked at a lot of systems that um, you know are pretty widely used by people. So a good example is a few years ago, we started looking at Bitcoin, which obviously is in the news a lot today. And we, we noticed that, you know, while Bitcoin works, amazingly enough, there are a lot of privacy problems with it. There's no way to actually uh, hide the fact that you paid somebody using Bitcoin. And so we started looking at different ways you could, you could keep that information secret. And we came up with uh, a bunch of ideas for how to do this. One of them is actually, uh, it's called the Zero Cash Protocol, and it's used in a real cryptocurrency today, which is called Zcash. So we, we really, we're really interested in kind of solving these problems that are actually relevant to the world. I'm um, trying to give some other examples of research pro problems. So about a year or two ago, we started looking at this thing called Apple iMessage. Um, iMessage is the, uh, most people don't even know what the name of it is, but basically when you send a text to somebody else from an Apple phone, and that person also has an Apple phone, you uh, are sending an end-to-end -end encrypted message. So hypothetically, even Apple shouldn't be able to read what you're sending. And so we looked at that protocol and uh, my students and I found that there was actually a flaw in it, and that it was possible using this really sophisticated attack to actually decrypt all of the data or at least part of the data that somebody was sending over Apple servers, which means, who knows, maybe a foreign government or maybe the US government would be able to recover that information. And so we actually went to Apple, we told them, hey, you guys have this problem and they, uh, they told us to go away and they told us that it would take them months, months to fix it. And, uh, but eventually they did and it went out as part of a, a 
patched to every one of a billion Apple devices. So the, the sort of short summary of all this is that there are a lot of real things happening. Crypto cryptography and this kind of area of making computer systems secure and private is incredibly important. There's stuff that you can do here today that will affect billions of people and actually make a big difference. And we've had students come out of this program who have done things like that. So for example, a few years ago, uh, I had some uh, MSSI students who were interested in cryptocurrencies and they were interested in some of the work we were doing here. Uh, they went off and they took some of the, these protocol ideas and implemented them and they actually launched a cryptocurrency themselves. And it, I don't know what it's worth today, but it was worth like a billion dollars as of uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So, so people have done stuff and there's opportunities for actual students to, you know, just you know, from the first day, start kind of learning enough to do research and then do projects. Um, I teach a class called Practical Cryptographic Engineering. And so what I try to teach students is kind of the, the fundamentals of cryptography. How do you encrypt things securely? How do you break systems that don't encrypt things securely? And how do you, you know, build real systems out of this? And so one of the things I do in my class is we have a class project. And this year, a lot of uh, the students were interested in looking at ransomware. So you may know that ransomware is um, is basically it's malware. It gets onto your computer, it encrypts all your files, and then it demands money. And one of the problems we don't know how to stop the malware. That's that's not my department. But one of the problems with this malware, this ransomware, is it turns out a lot of it is infecting people. And then when you go to pay the ransom, you give some people money, and you never get the keys back. And so you're basically thrown away your money, and you never see your data again. So one of the problems I pose to the students is. Is there a way, you know, this is a weird question, but is there a way people will be able to make better ransomware in the future? It seems like a weird thing. Like, why are we trying to make better ransomware? But part of the reason is that, well, you know, on one hand, better ransomware would actually be a lot better for the people who are losing data. And on the other hand, we want to know what attackers might do in the future. So some of the students came up with some really clever solutions where they used uh, smart contract systems like uh, Ethereum and so on to basically build ransomware where you're guaranteed that if you pay someone, you're definitely going to get the key back. And they actually implemented this and they, they did some projects using this. So it was really interesting. Um, and so one of the things I love about this class is that I get to see kind of creative, uh, people's creative solutions to different problems. So that's, that's a big part of the work that we do just in classes. My hope is that somebody comes out of a class and says, hey, I love doing this stuff. This is what I want to do. And then, you know, I have a seminar class where we get to explore that more. And then ultimately, you know, the perfect outcome is that you're actually doing research. And, you know, not everyone wants to do that. Many people just want to go, you know, kind of take classes. And that's a perfectly fine track, too. But some people really want to do different things and see if they can kind of make an impact on the science of, of this field. And so it's great that we have the opportunity for students to follow either of those tracks. Um, trying to think what else to say here. I'm kind of blowing through this all very quickly. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity for for students to work in labs. Uh, we have that opportunity, and I should also mention since Abhishek is not here, uh, Abhishek Jain is my colleague who uh, is he's more of a theoretical cryptographer and he teaches a really high end uh, intro to theoretical cryptography. If you take that class, you know you'll be in a good position to basically do advanced kind of cryptographic theory research. He teaches everything from one-way functions and complexity classes on up. It's a, it's a really, really dense class, different kind of area than myself. Uh, anyway, that's that's pretty much all I have. Uh, you can ask questions at the end of this, and I hope to see you soon. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm being told uh, who is next. Yes, okay. Um, next, we have uh, student presenters, and we'll start with uh, Shika. So, uh, hi, everyone. I'm Shika. Uh, I graduated last month, and uh, I am going to talk about life at Hopkins. So uh, it's a very lovely campus. Uh, you've got uh, quite a few study spaces. There's a main library um, <clears throat> and a whole building only for study spaces. Uh, you also have a dedicated building for uh, information security and computer science. Um, and there are labs where you can uh, work on your practical projects and study and um, you've got a whole uh, uh, quiet spaces uh, available in, in all of the buildings. Uh, there's a cafeteria which closes right after lunch, uh, but the coffee shop which serves uh, Starbucks is open until late in the night. Um, there are vending machines um, all across the campus. Uh, there are also lots of restaurants right across the street on the North Charles Street and the St. Paul Street. 
Uh, most of the students grab their dinners from one of those if they're spending late nights on the campus in the labs uh, working on the projects. If you're interested in recreational activities, which I would highly recommend to Blue Ox team, uh, you have a wide variety of options from sports to music to dancing. Uh, the JHU Career Center organizes a career fair in the fall semester. Fortunately, since more and more companies are now recruiting for cybersecurity, they come in with a lot of positions, although on-spot interviews are rare. But uh, we can make a lot of contacts and um, um, uh, present your resumes to a lot of potential recruiters. There's a free shuttle service, which is very convenient to book using their app or by calling up the Homewood Security Frontline. And uh, you can go to any place uh, within a, a minimum, uh, within like the maximum distance radius. Uh, as far as the on-campus jobs are considered, there's huge scope to land on-campus jobs. You can go for teaching assistance, research assistance, um, some library positions, student disability services. There are, these, these, this is not the, uh, these are not the only jobs that are available. You can go to stujobs.com um, uh, and you will get a list of uh, available jobs before uh, you come on campus and you can even apply and speak to the um, representatives um, over email or over phone. Uh, definitely this course is grueling, but you will get a lot, of, a lot out of it and you will love every minute of it. Uh, Baltimore is a very unique city. Uh, there are a lot of uh, attractions, but always make sure to go out in groups of at least two to three, at least until you get a hang of the place. Um, there's Baltimore Museum, uh, Baltimore Marathon for, for all our uh, keen runners. Uh, if you love crabs, Baltimore crab cakes are famous across the United States. Uh, I have listed some convenient housing options around the Humboldt campus, but uh, definitely not limited to these. Uh, but these options are uh, are economical and, and pretty reasonable. Uh, Washington DC and New York City are two of the most uh, uh, visited tourist spots across uh, the United States and uh, Baltimore is very conveniently located uh, 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 to both of these. Uh, the free college town buses covers uh, all the major routes and it takes you to most of the important places uh, across the city. Uh, the major restaurants and shopping destinations, so you can make use of it. The most important tip that I can give you is to check the outside temperature daily. Baltimore temperature is very unpredictable, so you may need two to three layers in the month of September and not even a single layer um, of, of wool in, in, in the freezing month of January. So always check the temperature before stepping out of the house. This is not to scare you, but make yourself comfortable in Malone 316. This is going to be the MSSI lab, and it's probably going to be your home for the next year and a half. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to hand over to the next student presenter, Yusun. Hello, everyone. I'm Yusun, and I'm the third year student here. And instead of talking about the overview of the student life here, I'll just talk about my own experience in the next few minutes. Uh, first of all, uh, I took four courses in the previous semester, and one is the uh, practical cryptographic system, just taught uh, is taught by Professor Green, and uh, yeah, for security, um, introduction to cryptography and modern cryptography, and I think these four courses are really good for students that don't have any. Uh, information security backgrounds, just like me, and um, uh, definitely there are a lot more courses out there, so uh, you can check them uh, from the slides from Dr. Lee, and uh, next uh, is finding an internship here. Uh, uh, actually, you, you have two options when you are finding an internship. Uh, one is security engineer and one is software engineer. Um, because I'm not, uh, I don't have any background of like, security, so I found uh, mostly in the software engineer part. And if you are just uh, focusing on software engineer, you just need to 
uh, go to a career fair and revise your resume and solve problems on lead code. And that's just probably the same as you thought before. And third is the, uh, uh, the finding a part-time job on campus. And you can find um, part-time job openings on Student Affair website, and there are a lot there, so you can definitely find one. And sometimes professors will send out emails to all of the students, and that's uh, what I did. And I and you can go talk to the professor and get uh, uh, positions there. Um, and the fourth is the extracurricular activities. And what I did is I joined uh, the ACM meetings every week, and it is uh, uh, weekly meetings held by uh, ACM here at Hopkins. And there will usually be some lecturers there, and you can they are they are going to talk about topics related to computer science. And sometimes there will be social events like barbecue and board games or free pizza, something like that. And it's fun, and you can um, meet uh, a lot of people there. And the last thing is uh, the eat and live here. And actually, because I'm a vegetarian, so I usually prepare my meal by myself. So I cannot give you uh, some very practical uh, advice here. And uh, but about the, the house or sleep or leave here, uh, actually, uh, when you are finding uh, off-campus housing on the off-campus housing website at Hopkins, uh, they usually will require some reference persons. Um, so what I did is I asked Professor Lee and Ralph Lee to be my reference person, and you can definitely uh, do what I've done before. And I think that's all for what I, I did in a previous semester. And thank you for your listening. You should have a nice day. And next will be Ralph Lee. Good morning. My name is Reveille Niles. I'm the Academic Program Administrator for the Information Security Institute. So we will have a lot of contact if you decide to apply to the program and if you enroll in the program, um, because I handle a lot of the logistics for um, students who are beginning in the program. Um, so what I want to talk about now is you've heard all this great information. Hopefully you think that this is a program that will fit your needs and your goals and you're interested in applying. So let's go through the application process a little bit. Um, so you know exactly what's necessary. Um, the deadline for the fall admission is March 1st. Uh, it is not on a rolling basis, so we will um, pull the applications after March 1st, and you'll receive a decision, I'd say by mid-April. Um, the application process itself, I've listed the different pieces that um, are required. Um, the piece I wanna point out the most, because I do get most of the questions about the statement of purpose. In your statement of purpose, discuss what your goals are, discuss why this program is important to you, discuss what makes you unique. Why are you different from every other applicant that's applying? If you have research interests, we're also very interested in hearing about that. So the statement of purpose for you gives you an opportunity to sell yourself in a way that's not cookie cutter. You really get to just talk about the things that make you unique. Um, there isn't a certain page length to that. You don't have to write a dissertation, but definitely, you know, provide a comprehensive statement of purpose. Um, under the area where it says any supplemental information, I'll be talking about scholarships in a moment, but that is where you would upload a one page essay about any scholarship that you might be interested in applying for um, in that area. Also, I have listed are the test scores um, that we're looking for their minimum requirements. Um, so definitely, you know, you can use that as a basis for whether or not you feel as if you'll be competitive in this program. These are some scholarships um, that we have students who are currently using to attend and they are competitive, but they are available. Um, definitely take a look at each of them. They are on our website listed um, so you can see the different aspects, aspects of it. 
um, and see if you're eligible for them. Um, we do encourage you to apply. Again, they are highly competitive. Um, so do remember to add that extra page in with your application so that we know that you're interested in applying for any scholarships that we have available. Who do you contact? Um, we are a large university. Sometimes you don't know who to come to. Again, I am probably going to be in a lot of contact with you. Um, that is my email address. Again, my name is Revly Niles. It is rniles3 at jhu.edu. Um, if you have general inquiries about the admis admissions process or the MSSI program information, please feel free to email me. I'm mo I'll be more than happy to respond to you. If I don't know the answer, I'll direct you to where you need to go to get that. But you can definitely start with me if necessary. Um, also, we have talked a lot about our program today. Uh, the, um, the link is listed if you want to go and get some more details about the program information. And if you do choose to apply, which we hope you do, um, and you've submitted an application already and you have inquiries about that application prior to March 1st, um, the graduate admissions email address is who you would need to follow up with regarding submitted application materials. So just want to make sure we're clear on who you can contact. And again, when in doubt, if you're not sure, you can start with me and I'm more than happy to direct you wherever you need to go. Um, definitely feel free to email us if you have any questions about anything that you've heard today or the admissions process. Again, you can email me directly, rnals3 at jhu.edu. I'm more than happy um, to assist you. And thank you for watching today. Thank you, and uh, we look forward to having you join us.